you use kitchens in the church building because it's not an example in scripture. We'll have plumbing in the church building. We'll have water fountains in the church building, but not, not, well, a couple of hardcore ones I've heard of actually don't have a plumbing <laughs> in the building whatsoever. Um, you have the, uh, the one cup Church of Christ where they use one cup for communion instead of multiple little cups. So, there's legalism that's developing, and then there's some other things in the background which are going on. You have their interpretation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit li- doesn't live within you. The Holy Spirit's only active when you use the Word of God. That's kind of what they call the Word-only view. So you become a Christian, you don't get the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you, but you have the Word of God, and when the Word of God is open, you read it, you live it out. That's where the Holy Spirit works, not individually in the life of a Christian. So we have some uh, bad theology going with that. Now, of course, the big one that everyone is familiar with is their insistence of the necessity of baptism in the process of salvation. Right. And it's not only that, it's um, something a little bit underneath that, something called baptismal cognizance. So let's say that you're a Baptist and you're never heard the gospel and you're an adult. Let's make this an easy case. And... You start attending a Baptist church, you're reading the Bible, and okay, you understand the gospel, you understand the sinner, you repent, and basically, like a couple of weeks later, they have a baptismal service and you're baptized at that point. Someone in the, the Church of Christ legalistic theology, and not all of them hold to this, but a good chunk do, um, they say that that bit baptism was invalid because the person did not believe at the time they were being baptized that they were being baptized for the forgiveness of sins. They believed that they were forgiven at the point where they put their faith in Jesus, not the point where they were baptized. You kind of forward the timeline a little bit. We have, we're at the late 1960s, we're at 1967. We're in uh, the University of Florida, in Gainesville, Florida. There's a Church of Christ there, 14th Street Church of Christ, which basically they are a traditional Church of Christ. They teach the Sinai hermeneutic for interpretation. They teach that uh, baptismal cognizance, you have to know that you're, bat- you're being forgiven. You have to know that your sins are being forgiven at the time of baptism for it to be effective. No instruments of worship. So you have one of those churches, and they want to... Obviously, since they're on or near the campus of UC of Florida, they want to reach out to a bunch of students there and start campus ministry. So they hired a guy, his name is Chuck Lucas, who recently passed away a couple months ago. Um, so they hired Chuck Lucas as their campus minister. and He was influenced by a couple of other things that were going on. And this is happening not only in the Church of Christ, but other denominations as well. Um, you had a guy... In South America, call Juan, Juan, Juan Paul Ortiz? Juan Luis Ortiz. I think that's his name, Juan Luis Ortiz. Um, and in the 19, I believe in the 1950s, before this started off, he rediscovered this system called shepherding. Mm. In the shepherding system, you have one Christian and they are overseeing another Christian who's less mature than them to disciple them to directly pour into them, to help raise them up. And you know they're raised up when that person goes out and they make another Christian, they make another disciple of Jesus, and then they start doing the same thing. So this becomes kind of a pyramid Mm. to a degree. So a lot of people who are influenced by this idea, and this idea, there's been some research that some of this happened back in Roman Catholicism and some areas back in Europe in the Middle Ages. I must drop um, for obvious reason, because ultimately it's abusive. But that didn't stop other Protestant denominations analyzing this, looking at this, and seeing the results, like, wow, you have lots of numerical growth here. Mm-hmm. But overall, like, you know, the navigators and crew and the ones who implemented the, these types of systems on a more limited scale discovered that, yeah, this did not produce the mature Christians mm-hmm. that it seemed like it would. It produced numbers, but it didn't produce maturity. It didn't mm. produce a lot of the true fruit of the Holy Spirit. So when Chuck Lucas came in, he implemented his shepherding system, and it took off 
University of Florida.